Class of 2022, family and friends, faculty, members of the Mount Sinai Boards of Trustees, welcome to our annual White Coat Ceremony. The presentation of the White Coat to our medical students at the onset of their training is symbolic of starting the journey from medical student to physician. I want to begin by introducing you to the class of 2022. You are among the most talented medical school classes in the world. And I'm going to prove that right now. You come to Mount Sinai from the top undergraduate colleges and universities, and you have an average GPA of 3.84. I graduated 45 years ago. I was a 3.65. <laughs> so I probably wouldn't be in your seat. Your MCAT scores are as high as any other students in the country but you are much more than that. It is not the academic accolades that convince me to know that in you, you're gonna change the world. It is the fire in your eyes and the compassion in your hearts that tell me how much you can accomplish. Your achievement today go beyond your commitment to medicine and reveal the content of your character and your unique talents. Your class is diverse intellectually, with college majors in the sciences that include evolutionary biology, molecular biology, mathematics, chemistry, computer science, neuroscience, psychology, anthropology, economics, and political science. And some of you have majored in the humanities, including history, art, Italian literature, the classics, French, Asian and African American studies. What else have you done? You are dancers, you are musicians, opera singers, photographers, yoga instructors, poets. One of you is a glass blower. <laughs> Another is an auto mechanic. The college athletes in football, softball, rowing, hockey, soccer, tennis, and swimming. You have an alpine ski racer and scuba divers in your class. One of you served as a combat medic in the United States Army for years. And another was recently commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Many of you have done groundbreaking research in cancer and heart disease, infectious disease, brain diseases, and other conditions. And you are committed to social justice, which as you heard is very important to the ethics at Mount Sinai. Some of you became motivated to become physicians based on illnesses in your family. And some of you have compelling personal stories of resilience that I wanna hear more about. Let's recognize the accomplishments of the class of 2022. This ceremony is important because it provides the opportunity to reflect what it means to don the white coat and join the order of physicians. I can tell you that it does not does not represent or symbolize an induction into a class of elite academics. Rather, because an education at Mount Sinai is a great privilege, it comes with serious responsibilities. Today, with these my welcoming words to you, I wish to speak about some of the most important obligations. The work ahead. The world in which you are about to immerse yourself hungers for new ideas and solutions. We need a more complete understanding of the human body. We need breakthroughs to fight disease, alleviate suffering, and achieve meaningful social justice. In other words, we need answers to many urgent and long-standing questions that bear on the lives of your patients. 
With the support of your teachers, you will tackle this important work at Mount Sinai. The experiences you have here will shape the rest of your lives, and you will have opportunities that others can only dream of. As I mentioned, many of you decided to become physicians because of illnesses suffered by members of your own family, such as cancer and heart disease and infectious disease and neurological and psychiatric disease. I can empathize with that because it's been true for my own family as well. I lost a grandchild with a genetic disease. And in the last six months, I lost an aunt uh, who was like a sister to me with a rapidly progressive form of lung cancer. And my mother who had dementia, which was unresponsive to any treatment. So there's a lot of work we all need to do together. The few. This is my view. There are a relatively small number of medical school classes in the United States or even the world that have your ability and the available resources to become the next generation of brilliant physicians, transformative scientists, and leaders that will shape the future of medical education, biomedical research, and the delivery of high quality care to all Americans. Class of 2022, there's only 140 of you. Yet there are so many patients in our local community, our city, our country, and our world that are going to need you. For me, it brings to mind, and I love quotes, as people know, it brings to mind the famous Winston Churchill speech to the House of Commons on August 20th, 1940, during the Battle of Britain, when he referred to the Royal Air Force in the following way. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. The pilots who fought in that battle have become known as the few ever since. So you are going to be the few, the few, who must change the face of medicine. There aren't that many of you in the United States, and there are a lot of patients in the United States and around the world. What does it mean to become a physician? As you train to become an outstanding physician, I suggest you keep in mind the five pillars of practice that was articulated by a legendary cardiologist at Mass General, Roman DeSantis. There's one common thread that, le that links these five pillars, and that is the singular importance of the patient, the man, the woman, the girl, the boy, that has entrusted you with their care and often their lives. So the first pillar is that the patient should always come first in the life of the doctor. And second, in any situation, at any time, you should weigh all the information that you have in hand to try to help and do what's best for your patient. And the third pillar is to follow the golden rule as it applies to the practice of medicine. And that is the patient should be managed in the way the doctor or a member of his or her family would like to be treated as if he or her were the patient in that bed at that time. You should be a friend to your patient as well as a caregiver and always demonstrate your humanity with honesty, sincerity, and empathy. As Peabody suggested, one of the central quality for clinicians is an interest in humanity for the secret of the care of the patient is in caring for the patient. You should never forget that the beauty and essence of medicine still lies in the personal and precious interactions between us and the patients that we serve. Now some of you are going to become transformative scientists. And to do that, you're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to challenge convention. You're going to have to take risk and learn from failure. And your goal, like the goal of the scientists at Mount Sinai, is to make discoveries that allow those that die today to live tomorrow. 
leadership. Many of you are going to become the next generation of leaders of medicine. And one question is, what will it take to become a leader of the next generation of physicians and scientists? Do the times make the leader, or does the leader shape the times? How can a leader infuse people's lives with a sense of purpose and meaning? Resilience and powerful emotional intelligence is the foundation of great leadership. If you couple these traits with empathy and humility, self-awareness and self-discipline, and generosity of spirit, you can become a transformative leader. Let me talk a little bit, a bit about what life as a physician and scientist will be. There is no doubt that becoming a physician is stressful. Patients will come to you during crisis in their lives and ask you for answers. And sometimes those answers are not forthcoming. You will be expected to stitch up both mentally and physically the victims of adversity. And you will be the one that is expected to make sacrifices when hard times fall on your own life. Family members will look to you as a pillar of strength. Yes, being a doctor is tough. But let me be among the first to tell you how rewarding it can be. And as a scientist, will you have the creativity and intelligence to come up with ideas that nobody else has thought of? That's not easy. But Mount Sinai students and Mount Sinai faculty, they write the textbooks. They come up with new knowledge. And when your greatest insights are first ridiculed and then violently opposed, and that happens in science, you must never give up and arrive at the point when that all truths pass and that is universal acceptance. It is a fact today that too few patients are being cured. Sometimes, though, you will save a person's life. And some of you will make a discovery that will help many, if not millions, of lives. Granted, you're coming into medicine expecting such moments to be more frequent than they actually are. But these moments do exist. They are not a myth. It will happen. I want to talk a moment about self-compassion. You're going to face some dark days. We all do as physicians and scientists. It is important that you recognize the power of self-compassion. When you experience a setback, there is a tendency to become defensive, blame yourself, or berate yourself. That is not helpful. Instead, respond with self-compassion. And we'll help you with this. You should be kind to yourself rather than judgmental. We all make mistakes. Don't avoid Avoid uh, dwelling on the setback. It will contribute to your personal growth, both professionally and personally. And finally, Ken mentioned this too, we dare you to become great. That's our expectation, that you don't become good doctors or good scientists, that you, you become great doctors and great scientists to change medicine. Now, as I conclude, it occurs to me that my remarks may be somewhat overwhelming, given that you've only been here a few weeks. <laughs> so I have, I have another quote. Th this actually was President Kennedy's uh, favorite quote. And it was from a, uh, a Breton fisherman who said, Oh God, thy sea, thy sea is so great and my boat is so small. Thy sea is so great, thy, my, my, boat, my boat is so small. So it, it may feel that way at times, but we're going to be there to help you navigate this sea. And I'll say another quote that is a favorite of mine, and I'm sure a favorite of many in the audience. And this comes from Theodore Roosevelt, who said during a speech called Citizenship of the Republic, which he delivered in Paris, France, on April 23rd, 1910. It's called the 
person or man in the arena or woman in the arena. The credit belongs to the man or woman who's actually in the arena, and you will be in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself or herself in a worthy cause, who at best, if he or she wins, knows the thrills of high achievement, and if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his or her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. So we expect you to push the envelope, uh, to th think thoughts that have not been thought before, to go beyond what is normal in helping your patients. Finally, uh, class of 2022, let us start today to begin the work you have come here to do, to learn, to listen carefully, but to ask new questions and challenge, to see with new eyes. And most of all, when you leave this hall today, have a commitment in your hearts and minds to build a new uh, future that will improve the health and well-being of humanity. Thank you.